Hey, everybody. Welcome to this special episode of the Goat Marketing Show. We are going to do a deep dive. We're going to focus more on the business of AI and how we achieved a 9x ROAS on a campaign where we used AI completely from beginning, from the ideation phase, right through creating landing pages, the actual campaign creative, the ad campaigns, Google campaigns. And then actually diving into the data and re-optimizing again and again and again. And this campaign continues to perform at 9x month after month, even after the optimizations. Super pumped to walk through this with John and Ben. Uh, John has been leading this charge, uh, which has been a nice supporting in the background. So it's going to be a fun series. We're going to break it up over four stages. Uh, today's focus is going to be diving into the importance of customer journey and understanding how to set AI up to get the best out of a campaign. John, Ben, so glad to be back doing this again. Yeah, this is fun. And this is a good one too. This is great to have, finally have like a, a really solid case study where we can look at some real data here. You know, one of the reasons I was most excited to do this series is just within our culture, one of the things we try to let uh, everyone on our team do is kind of pick an angle and encourage them to take things. And originally when we started, this particular client who is an attorney in Manhattan, so incredibly competitive market, but we weren't sure if this was necessarily someone we can help. But I said, you know, this is a great opportunity for John to dive in and understand, hey, you know, I've never managed ads before, number one. Number two, I've never really built a campaign from scratch. So this is a really good way, one, to give a learning opportunity, but number two, a really great way to see how can we leverage AI to supplement some knowledge. So, you know, part of what's exciting for me is one, you get to share your learning journey, but two, really help bridge the gap for most people to understand like, hey, you might not have a huge team, but AI has some ways to be leveraged to supplement and fill in some blanks and really leapfrog some learning advantages and just get people further along. So I will let you guys kick it off. John, maybe just give some explanation who the client is. Um, and then we'll dive in from there. Ben, same thing. If you want to add some some insights into kicking off, because I, I think you helped get the project management and the structure along uh, with John. But yeah, maybe just kick it off with who it is. Dive in from there. Yeah. So this uh, this client that we've been working with for, I guess, oh, just over a year now has been uh, Lois Brenner. She's a divorce attorney in Manhattan, and she uh, had some unique uh, kind of differenti differentiators in her her business, where she is not only um, a special a legal specialist, but she's also um, a psychology. Uh, she has a uh, was it a PhD that she had in psychology? Yeah, she's a doctorate in psychology and law. She just loves going to school. Yeah. Which is yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know how long that would take, but it's it's got to be a long time. Um, but yeah, so she specializes in cases with uh, involving mental health. And things like that. So it was uh, interesting to kind of have that different angle in in her business and see what we could do with that. And one of the things we do in our process, I think, Ben, you can dive deeper into this, but we really double down on looking at the customer journey. And one of the things John highlighted that made this specifically unique is we're able to then understand what her unique proposition is, how she goes to market, and then tie that in. Ben, from your perspective, I and mean, we've done probably 30 exercises where we've done customer journey mapping. What stood out to you that was unique in her process to kind of set this up so we could use AI? I liked when, when we first got with uh, Lois, the thing that stood out to me was that she was looking for clients, um, not necessarily going to have a divorce, she was looking for people to go through the the mediation stage and actually drive through that. So being able to go through the process of her journey map and identify like the key differentiators between her clients and maybe perhaps a, a typical uh, divorce attorney or, or family attorney um, was kind of that first light bulb moment for us where we were actually starting to craft the personas of who we were going to target. And it just snowballs from there. I think in general, what we sell now is the customer journey. The work we do on retainer afterwards is always supplementary after the fact, but without the customer journey, we've refused work before. We can't do what we do to, to the level that we know we can do it. And Lois was a great example of kind of when the, uh, the AI process for us was sort of at its inception stage was just like the perfect storm for us to, to go through that, 
that customer journey process. And yeah, the, the main identifier was just seeing why her clients were different than the typical uh, attorney's clients. You, you, you touch on an interesting point because one of the things when I think most people go in to use AI, they're so focused on either prompt engineering or trying to create a customer GPT. But this was a specific case where once we defined who the persona was, how she connects with them and what her messaging was, it became a lot easier to structure the custom GPTs and even just our general AI workflow because it was so contextually relevant. And I find a lot of people rush through this stage. They don't take the time with the persona. They don't take the time with where are the critical points of the customer journey. So they tend to get the same kind of content back from GPT as most others. And I think all the times, every time I'm either speaking, we've had it in client conversations, the biggest concern is why am I going to get a different response than somebody else in GPT? And the truth is, without that context, you're not. That seems to be the missing link. And I think what this helped us do is it helped us push the development of personas. And I mean, to a detail point, which then one of the next sections, we're going to actually show you live in a future episode of how we dove in and how we created very priced personas. And these precise personas allowed us to target better on Google ads. It allowed us to target better on social and it allowed us to create better email content. So when they know to write something, it would almost be creating a superpower brief. But what was your experience, John? I think, you know, you'd never been into Google ads, but having that persona document, how much did that help you with the process of writing ad talk, generating keywords, and kind of locking? No, and maybe give them the caveat of she does something different in targeting that allowed us to be competitive in Manhattan before. So maybe dive a little deeper there. Yeah, I think as that being really, as you said, the first time that I'd, that I'd gone through Google ads like that, um, the, the base level of having that persona document is, I mean, yeah, I couldn't, I don't think I could have done it without it and being like knowing exactly who I'm talking to and, um, having, you know, Google understanding who I'm talking to and chat GPT understand who I'm talking to when I'm writing headlines and when I'm comparing headlines and I was using both, both technologies, um, to kind of bounce ideas off each other, like writing the headlines in ChatGPT and then also having Google optimize them and then putting it back into ChatGPT and having it kind of them be learning from each other and using the, the persona to create that and, and kind of the, the customer journey and the unique aspects and mediation and uh, making sure we're hitting those keywords and then um, all of the different um, terms in, in terms of the mental health aspect of her business, which was an, an interesting one because you can't advertise a lot of those things directly. You know, you can't talk about mental health directly in ads. So you kind of have to find ways to to work around that and and still let people know what you're offering um, without being so explicit. And so that was an interesting learning curve too, uh, trying to figure that out. And and Google obviously is is great with with kind of helping you optimize that. And um yeah, I, I I don't know how much else I can say about that, but it was it was Google Google is overwhelming when you look at that dashboard for the first time. So having like the work that you guys did in 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 setting that foundation with Lois made it so much easier. Like it was just a huge part that I didn't have to try and figure out on my own. It was just laid out for me. It was so nice. One of the things we're gonna do throughout this series of videos. So in the next one, we're gonna show how to create the persona document. We're going to show how to build the landing page. So one of the things John's mentioning, we actually had the landing page done that was very specific about the problem that Lois could solve. And this is one of the unique things that I think a lot of people don't take for granted or don't appreciate how powerful it is, is when you're working with a search engine like Google and you position something that's problem-based and the landing page is contextually relevant to solving that problem, your ads are natively going to, going to work better. And Google tends to favor them. And because in Lois's case, she specialized in how to divorce a narcissist, we were able to create a landing page that was very specific to how she is an expert in that space, the common conditions someone should do, what are steps they need to take and get ready for divorce. So it was actually a really cool process to be able to understand what she did really well, how to solve a common problem that she could not only compete, but she could win against. So we could make her entire game her entire campaign work effectively. So 
I'm really pumped to showcase and walk through each of those steps in the following segments and throughout this series so we can break them down. And for anybody who's watching this, please, wherever you are, just throw in the comments if there's something specific you want to see or there's an area that you want us to dive into because we're going to do a behind the scenes, fully transparent, show you how we built it. Everything from the prompts we put in, how we built and structured the landing pages, how we then went to the ads to get them. And one of the things that John touched on, which was really important, is using the right platform for the right output. Because we were creating Google ads, we started in Gemini. We said, hey, this is the landing page we're using. Can you help us come up with an ad strategy for search ads in this incredibly competitive space? So our benchmark was already further ahead because we used the Google platform to give us a Google result. We also, at times, will use it for SEO if we're trying to index in Google. Then we were able to take it back and make sure that the tone matched inside of GPT. Same thing if you're doing meta ads, go into the meta AI and just say, hey, I'm trying to figure out how to grow my organic social posts, or I'm trying to figure out how to create a killer ad. Start with the platforms that you're in and build out from there. Copilot for Microsoft, you're going to use Bing. So all of the platform, using the right platforms and consolidating them in is super, super powerful. We will show you that. We'll dive into that section as well. Ben, in terms of building uh, landing pages, developing copy, what's your take on like the efficiency just from having to manage this and managing multiple people versus like a consolidated resource? It's the easiest project management I've ever had to do. Um, Once the project was set up and John had the tools he needed, it was really just off to the races. It was an optimization job more so than it was necessarily like new tasks every day. So for me, it was as about as easy as it could get. My work was almost was virtually done once we had the scope identified and um, the the project was off and rolling. That's all. Big win for one other big thing I want to say is the importance of systems. The reason we are getting a 9x is we have systems in place that are really easy to use. We chose to go go high level because it was a really easy to use platform for this particular client. But if you do not have a mechanism that is connected properly to track your results, to nurture leads, and to be able to optimize and follow up, it's very, very difficult to get a positive return. And I will say, this client's not necessarily the most technically proficient, but we put a system in that was drag and drop. So it was very easy. Once they got a lead, they could move it to the next stage of the funnel. We could report on performance. We could see the close. Without that, it's really hard to drive efficiency. And when you're using multiple platforms, it's very hard to understand if the attribution works. Fortunately, because of how this funnel is structured and where we're targeting, we know Google the right platform, so we only have one lead source. But the more complex it gets, the more important it's going to be to have the right systems, be able to nurture it. And right now, we're at the stage where we're trying to both scale ads as well as re-engage some of the old leads. So having email integrated was super helpful. But John, your perspective, I mean, you've never really worked in a CRM system. Um, how much easier has that made the process? In in go high level? Yeah. Or just in general, like from other campaigns you've managed or it's multiple systems. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, well, I think about how much it probably means to, in, in terms of a, um, gathering data and having everything in in one place that you need like having go high level for her was uh so big because it was her uh we could manage the landing pages in there and the funnels that we were putting people through we could manage her in terms of of collecting their leads and kind of moving them through the process we could manage all their contacts um, we, and then, you know, go high level has, has some pretty cool AI stuff that they do as well. So it was, it, it just, it just made the whole thing a hell of a lot easier to, to manage. And I wasn't having to, I feel like now in, in there's just so many softwares and so many different platforms and, and just being able to manage all of Lois's stuff in just go high level and Google was, was so nice for someone like it, I just makes for less mistakes, less human errors. Like it's it's just way easier. Yeah. The worst is a campaign can be broken for a couple of days if you have different platforms and you don't even know, oh, the emails are insane because I have to log in. So whatever you choose, doesn't matter if it's go high level. I would encourage everybody, just pick a platform that has uh, more things in the same spot. 
what'd you do? You kick up pen. It's gone. It's gone into the ether. Uh, the other big piece I will say, and it was on her landing page, you see, is she still using the AI video or did she record a video? What video did we end up with? No, we didn't end up, we didn't actually go with the AI video, even though it was pretty good, but we went with, with, uh, another video. Okay. The one crazy part, no, it's not anybody who's a course creator, info products. There's a tool called HeyGen. It has come so far. Like it can create a likeness. Honestly, it could be me doing this right now. Um, it's more of like a talking head. The body doesn't move. So it might be more like this and more static, but it's better. But I mean, it's come a long, long way. And I think we're going to continue to see that. So if you do a lot of talking head training or you need to go like AI to script to voiceover, but with a moving head, it's crazy what it can do for landing pages. So we did test that. It didn't end up with that. Um, but we will show that just for context yeah. for people looking to build landing pages who may not want to be on screen. Uh, anything else you want to add before we start wrapping up? I don't think in this part, I mean, we got a lot to get into, but I think we, we touched on the main stuff that we wanted to talk about in, in terms of storytelling and creating that customer journey and the persona. So I think that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good starting point to this, to this series. Beauty. I am pumped everybody. This topic has been really cool and it's nice to have a completely full cycle story where we went from idea and we even used AI to process transcripts so we could pull out notes and get the true sentiment, building landing pages, then moving on to the campaign creation. So everything we're working through here is going to be fun to share the behind the scenes. If you have questions, please throw them in the comments, share this with friends, colleagues. Um, we are really pumped to get through this with you. Thanks everybody. We should, we should, also, we should also say that we're filming and recording and editing all of this in AI software as well. 100%. So it's all... Check out Descript. Uh, we are testing this tool, so we'll give you some honest feedback as we go through it. But I will tell you, so far, being able to play in the AI game for a while, it's been super fun, especially the last three months. It's been really interesting. So we'll have to do a special awesome. episode on how we create so much content. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon. Take care.